cop watch, policing the police every single day. These city attorneys never swore oath to city I'm suing. Here's why that matters. It's been a modern day version of David vs Goliath with Doc Justice holding up strong during the six year battle. I am embroiled in an epic public records battle against one of the most prestigious law firms in South Florida, a well connected powerhouse of an organization representing dozens of cities throughout the area, including Homestead, which happens to be one of the most corrupt. Homestead also happens to be the city whose police force has arrested me three times because I tried to hold one of their officers accountable back in 2012. That cop, Alejandro Murgaido, has also since filed three false stalking injunctions against me where I was required by law to surrender my guns to police without due process. All because one day I asked Murgaido, who lives down the street from me, not to speed through the neighborhood because I was worried he would run over kids playing in the streets, including my own. All the charges and stalking injunctions against me were thrown out of court. Meanwhile, I have filed seven lawsuits against the Homestead Police Department as well as the Miami-Dade Police Department for civil rights violations, defamation, and refusal to release public records. I have spent more than $80,000 in my legal battle while Homestead has paid more than $150,000 to Weiss, Sirota, Helfman, Cole and Bierman, also known as WSH, the high-profile law firm it contracted to handle city business. But it recently came to my attention that not a single attorney from WSH ever swore an oath to the city, even though as contracted employees to the city, they have taken on the role of city attorney. And that is a direct violation of the Homestead Code of Ordinances, which states the following. The city attorney shall, before entering upon the duties of his office, take and subscribe to the oath of office in like manner as other executive officers of the city, and similar in form and the same in substance as that taken by the council. If the city attorney failed to swear an oath to the city, then they must be fired immediately. If they are not fired, then their employer could be guilty of a second-degree misdemeanor, which carries up to 60 days in jail, and a $500 fine. In this case, the employers would be the Homestead City Council, whom I plan on addressing during tonight's City Council meeting on this very issue. Last time I published an article saying I was going to be attending the upcoming City Council meeting to address council members about a particular issue, I was arrested within minutes of entering City Hall and charged with trespassing. I'm hoping that won't happen tonight. Latest Lawsuit I filed a 61-page second amended complaint, Pro SE, on June 11, 2018, listing eight WSH attorneys, including Richard Weiss and Joseph Sirota, who happen to be the W and S of WSH. Also named our Homestead Police Chief Alexander Roll, City Manager George Gritzes, and City Clerk Elizabeth Sewell. WSH is proud of its work defending cities against public records requests. One of the firm's attorneys, Samuel Zeskind, boasts on his personal bio about his expertise in the representation of numerous municipalities defending public records claims. It's as if this guy uses his willingness to violate the records law as a selling point to hire him, not to mention his boast of defending red light cameras. What a lovable guy, right? But wait there's more. Remember the whole Stingray issue several years back where police were illegally using cell phone interceptors without warrants? Zeskin's fingerprints are all over it. The ACLU went after one of Zeskin's client, the city of Sunrise, over a public records request regarding the use of the Stingrays. Zeskind responded by refusing to confirm nor deny the existence of such records, which is known as the Glomar response. But the ACLU took him to task for it. Not only does Zeskind hate public records, he apparently hates accountability and the Fourth Amendment too. But no one has ever gone after WSH until now, that is. There are over 80 exhibits broken into five categories, general, follow UPS, emails, invoices and requests. 
Also included as an exhibit is the video above where inspection of public records was denied because I had no appointment, which is a violation of public records that states inspection of records must be allowed at any reasonable time. That alone violates the records law, not to mention how the city has raped me over fees where I have paid more than $4,500 in public records fees. Criminal anarchy, treason, and crimes against public order. Not only does Homestead City Charter forbid city attorneys from representing their clients without having sworn oaths, Florida law does as well, meaning FSH as well as the mayor and council are in violation of the law. According to Chapter 876 of the Florida Statutes, aptly titled Criminal Anarchy, Treason, and Crimes Against Public Order, FS. 876.05 requires all employees and officers of the state and of a county, town, city, or other municipality to swear a loyalty oath, or oath of office. Without this document being on file with the employing agency, the employee or officer cannot lawfully receive any salary, expenses or other compensation from public funds. FS. 876.06 requires the governing authority to immediately discharge and remove from payroll any employee or officer who refuses to or fails to execute, i.e. sign and submit a copy of, their oath of office. FS. 876.08 provides that any governing authority or person whom an employee is serving or employed by, i.e. the city council as the attorneys work for them, shall knowingly or carelessly permit the employee to continue in employment after failing to comply with the law requiring such an oath, is guilty of a second-degree misdemeanor, which carries up to 60 days in jail, and a $500 fine. I began my investigation into this matter by filing a request for the copies of the oath of office for the city attorneys involved in my case on May 31, 2018. The city responded 12 days later stating no records existed. I then emailed Sewell requesting to inspect the oaths of the mayor and council. Ten minutes later Sewell sent an email stating the records were ready for inspection. I then drove to City Hall and inspected the oaths of the mayor and council. I have since placed both the mayor and council on notice as well as the city attorneys. And I plan to address them during tonight's city council meeting. Let's hope I don't get arrested. The meeting starts at 6 p.m., which means I can address the council anytime between 6.30 to 9 p.m. The meeting will be broadcast live on this link. From right to left, WSH attorneys Eric Stedden, Edward Gwittes, Richard Weiss, the W in WSH, Joseph Sirota, the S in WSH, and Sam Zeskind. Here is the timeline of my battle against Homestead. October 29, 2012, I saw Murgaido in his front yard and motioned to speak with him, as he had ran me off the road while driving the week earlier. I asked him to drive respectfully and obey the law, as I was concerned for the safety of the children in the neighborhood including my own. After I left I was chased down and 12 officers came and detained me for over an hour and a half. They told me if I filed a complaint it would not be good for me. January 24, 2013, I called and left messages with Internal Affairs, IA, for both Homestead Police Department, HPD, and Miami-Dade Police Department, MDPD. My calls were not returned until after Murgaido could first file charges and claims against me. February 2013 On the 13th, I left another message with HPDIA. On the 15th, Murgaido filed criminal charges against me after IA told him to. On the 28th he filed a false stalking injunction. April 14, 2013, I was arrested six months after the incident by MDPD for corruption through threats and aggravated stalking. MDPD had no warrant or probable cause for arrest. October 8, 2013, I filed my first public records request. February 7, 2014, I met with HPD Chief Alexander Roll to file a complaint after all charges had been dismissed against me. Roll subsequently destroyed the evidence I gave him. August 9, 2014, P. 
Pinnock published an article about the earlier incidents. This eventually led to Murgaito filing another stalking charge and two more false stalking injunctions. December 2014, the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office, Mzeo, sent me a letter warning me to never record police without permission. I had published a video using a recording I made in Roll's office. This led to the filing of my first lawsuit. I won the appeal at the 11th Circuit in July 2017 establishing the right to secretly record police even in a closed-door meeting. July 2016, I was kicked out of the Homestead Council meeting mid-speech and threatened. I published a story on this the day before the August meeting. August 24, 2016, upon entering City Hall for the August Council meeting, I was illegally trespassed therefrom then falsely arrested for disorderly conduct and trespass after warning. September 1, 2016, when going to meet my attorney, I was pulled over and falsely arrested again this time for witness tampering and cyber stalking, then served with my fourth false stalking injunction. July 31, 2017, after filing my Pro SE public records case, I had the first hearing where some violations of the records law were found. May 21, 2018, I had the second hearing on my public records case, where it was determined that anyone in possession of public records including the attorneys could be sued for violations. June 11, 2018, I filed the second amended complaint alleging violations of 40 requests, and naming eight attorneys as defendants, as well as the police chief, city manager, and city clerk for Homestead. On June 4, 2018, the U.S. Supreme Court denied the Mzeo's petition for certiorari. McDonough v. Rundle, 862F.3D314, 11th Sir 2017, is now the law of the land. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Dr. James Eric McDonough. I live at 32320 Southwest 199th Avenue. I'd like to give a big thank you to Manager George Gretzis for continuing to use the manager's report to respond to us. That he keeps responding shows that he's already lost. It's almost amusing now to watch him flounder as he desperately tries regaining control of the narrative. Manager Gretzis gave false statements to the media about me and Mr. Hill. He was called out for being a liar and he has been named as a defendant for this. Yet Gretzis again tried to portray me in a false light by claiming he had a list of all these departments I've sued he could just pull out of his pocket. But there is no list as he's claimed and again he's shown to be a liar. Gretzis also controls the hiring and firing of all city employees and refuses to follow city policy. I'm now aware of 20% of the police department being in violation of the nepotism policy but nothing is done. Additionally, not a single city attorney has executed an oath of office as required by the city charter. Further, Florida Statute 876.08, to my understanding, makes it a crime chargeable to the mayor and council to allow the attorneys to continue in employment without an executed oath on file. Whether council acts knowingly or carelessly, this would be the case, my understanding of the law. But wait, there's more. The city attorneys are named as co-defendants with the city for violations of public records. The attorneys have thrown the city under the bus and mainly defend themselves, all while charging the city. Ain't it a great country we live in where you can get paid to fix your own mistakes? I'd like to part of that deal. I claim this is a major conflict of interest, but Gretzis has wise, unwisely waived conflict leading to this result. This further highlights the importance of the cities having a loath of loyalty to the city, or the city attorneys having a loath of loyalty. Also, I'm sure you saw the Supreme Court just deny petition for certiorari to the Supreme the State Attorney, meaning my recording of Chief Roll, which exposed his felony official misconduct, is now legal and admissible. The citation is McDonough v. Rundle, 862F3D314, 11th Circuit, 2017, Supreme Court cert denied, 2018. Mayor and Council, I just wanted to bring this all to your attention to make sure you're aware of the facts. Now that you're aware, I thank you and have a good night. I have no more public comment cards, so I'll close the public hearing, I mean public comment section.
And we will go to business from the city manager. Mr. Manager, anything? Mayor, because I saw her today, I just, I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, read this because I saw her here tonight and she had to go, but. Hi, how are you doing, Ms. Sue? I was wondering if I could uh, personally inspect these records. Uh, I don't have them in my office right now. I have to get them from the staff that's producing the records. Okay, and I'm a little bit curious here on what these charges are. Um, well, I haven't reviewed the invoice. I you haven't reviewed the invoice? <clears throat> but it is stated here what it is. Um, yeah, but with like the legal fees, one, the contract for the legal fees showed that they charge at a rate of $125 an hour, not $204 an hour, and that's only for extraordinary work where they're on a flat rate retainer, so I'm not sure why I'm even I'm paying sure. for legal fees. Where did you get those numbers? Um, oh, I'll be happy to show those to you. Uh, here's the contract that the city has originally with uh, Coven and Stetson, and this contract was adopted by the city in one of our city council meetings. Mm -hmm. To get transferred to the other company. Um, I'm also curious with the staff charge at $45 an hour. My understanding is I'm supposed to be charged the lowest cost employee. For anything to do with ITS and that technical assistance, it is $45, $45 an hour. That's the flat rate. And what is ITS assistance? That is technology. Technology? Yes. It's technology assistance. It's the assistance provided by the ITS department, which gathers all of the emails from everywhere that it belongs in the city. And it took them five hours to find the emails? It took five hours to do the, doc, to, to, okay. all the re to do the research. Do you know who uh, would have prepared this? Prepared what? The invoice? This almost invoice, yes. My department prepared the invoice. It's okay. But the staff gives us how many hours, at what rate that they did the work at. Um, according to the redaction for the redaction services for confidential and exempt information. I'm also curious because I originally filed this records request on 10 2 2015, and this is nine months later when they're responding, giving me the invoice. Do we have any reason why they're taking nine months to respond to this? I don't have a reason. There, there's no reason? It's just an unlawful refusal to. Excuse me? Um, an unreasonable delay in time to respond is unlawful. I'm not saying that you broke the law, but it appears that somebody's broken, breaking the law. It doesn't take nine months to produce electronic records, okay? Well, originally they responded back in a month, in a week, and they said it was all attorney-client privilege and wouldn't give it to me. Now they're deciding to give it to me. Do you know who made the decision? I don't know who made that decision, sir. Okay. This department processes records that are given to us as the custodian to give to the public. That's what we do. Okay. We and make no decision on what to give you or what not to give you. Okay. Whatever we have, we produce. Okay. And if I just want to personally inspect the records, can I just do that? Or can you make it available so I can inspect them? Or is there a department I can go to to inspect these records? I would have to check with staff. Could you do that for me? Right now? Or they're going to drop everything they're doing and stop for you to review records. You did not make an appointment, sir. Um, not un me. under law. I don't have to make an appointment to review records. I know you asked me to make an appointment before in the past to review records, but that is an not okay. We are required to produce them to a reasonable time. You showed up this afternoon to review records. I have things on my desk I'm working on right now. I'm waiting on stuff from the attorney to process. So if you want to review these records with me right now, I can't just stop and drop everything. I'm well, I understand you don't have the records right now. I, I was saying, could you check I, on if we could get the records, or is there a yeah. place I can go to review the records? I understand you can't give me an answer can, right this second. I can give you an answer as soon as I get the answer, sir. Okay. I don't understand why you don't have the records. He was issued an invoice. That means your product is ready. Come and pick it up. No, it He's coming mean, here today to it, pick up the records. Sir, it means that... When you have paid the deposit, we can now move forward with the production of the records. Okay. We are not going to do the work and not get paid for it, okay? And get paid so very well for it. Well, sometimes what happens is we do the work and we get stuck and we don't get paid. So it's a policy decision that once we get paid, we move forward with the production of the records. And, and you know what I can test this fee with? Contest the fee. Yes, I, th I think yeah. it's an unreasonable and unlawful fee. Well, I think you have a, a 
aren't you doing something with the court, with a lawsuit or something? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to avoid filing more attorneys and putting legal costs on the city taxpayers. If my attorney do something separate, it costs. When the city is found to be not following the law, it costs the taxpayers. It's a burden. And I'm just trying to do whatever I can do to where we can amicably deal with this and where I can have to lawfully do get... this with the staff who has done the work and see if they can do anything to help us with this. Okay. But it, I don't have where in the law does it give the city the right to charge the 45 45 an hour for ITS? Because it's a Not because. Where in the law does it give the city the right to charge that? Statutes, chapter 119.07. Okay. 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 The Supreme Court in the past has ruled that they were only able to charge $35 for attorney reviewing things. So that's okay. I guess I'll be filing another lawsuit, Ms. Sewell. But thank you for your time and your own cooperation. We really appreciate it. You have a great day. Well, and once lock, again, lock the, window. the city police use who may want to retaliate against him physically. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I am using this stuff under fair use. And uh, also, uh, remember to like and subscribe this channel. Uh, also, too, uh, keep in mind, I do not make any money on YouTube. Uh, this is uh, five hours work a day, uh, you know, fighting for freedom. And uh, I do, I, you can donate with PayPal and Patreon. Uh, I just want you to think about this. If everybody gives uh, to PayPal and Patreon, Patreon is every month. Actually, PayPal you can do every month. I have 12,000 subscribers. If everybody gives, I can uh, quit my regular job and go full-time investigations on Charlotte County and possibly even more and beyond. So just keep that in mind. If everybody helps out, I can go full-time doing this. Thanks.